From the vast forests of southern Nigeria comes an unlimited supply of palm kernels. Chopped from the tall palm oil trees, the kernels are rich with oil that is needed by people all over the world for the manufacture of washing materials and lubricants and foodstuffs such as margarine. And in northern Nigeria, groundnuts, grown in the dry sandy soil with an oil content as rich and valuable as that of the palm kernel. But the processing of oil from nuts is not carried out in Nigeria. So they're sent by road and rail to Lagos, the capital and chief port from which they will be exported to Britain and other countries for the extraction of the oil. Processing of the raw materials for vegetable oils is nearly always carried out at an ocean port. One of the largest centers is Liverpool. Here will come the ground nuts and palm kernels that we saw harvested in Nigeria. But these are only two examples of the many sources of vegetable oils that are brought by sea to Liverpool. There are such things as linseed, sunflower seeds, cotton seed and soya beans arriving from many parts of the world. The docks at Liverpool are specially equipped for handling these cargoes and the workers are highly skilled at unloading them. But not all cargoes are sent over in sacks. Some were tipped straight into the hold and baskets are used for unloading. The contents are poured into chutes where they drop into the lighters waiting below. The factories lie around the dock area, sometimes with their warehouses backing conveniently onto the waterside. Often they are beyond the reach of ocean-going ships, but the lighters can move right up to the unloading elevators. These elevators consist of buckets on an endless band raising the nuts to the highest point of the warehouse. From there they drop into the huge storage silos. Looking down at the man in the picture gives some idea of the size. maintain a steady flow of work throughout the factory process, raw materials and products, wherever possible, are carried by mechanical means. It's remarkable what queer objects find their way into a cargo such as this. So, before processing, great care is taken to see that all rubbish is removed. First of all, light objects such as string and paper are trapped by this screen. Then metal objects are caught by these ridges and held fast by powerful electromagnets. These are just a few of the things, some of them quite heavy, which the magnetic separators have held back. After cleaning, the nuts pass over a series of roughened rollers. As one roller is turning faster than the other, the nuts are broken down into smaller sections. The movement can be seen more clearly in slow motion. According to the type of nut, the rollers vary in size. After passing through successive stages, the broken pieces are reduced to a fine meal from which the oil can be extracted more easily.
To help the oil to flow, the cells of the meal must be broken down. This is done in giant kettles by steam cooking, which also sterilizes the meal. The meal, still hot, is now ready for the oil to be extracted. But first, we're going to look at an older method which is easier to follow, using hydraulic presses. The meal is pressed into cakes and held in position by two mats of hessian, rather like the filling in a sandwich. As the cakes are made, they're placed on shelves in the presses, one above the other. When the pressure is applied, all the shelves are forced together, squeezing the cakes to such an extent that the oil runs quite freely. Most of the oil has now been extracted from the pressed cake, which is an excellent food for cattle, poultry and pigs but there still remains too much oil round the edges. Livestock must not have an excess of oil in their daily rations, so the slab cake is trimmed. The more modern method of extracting vegetable oil from nuts is by expellers. Here it is possible to complete the whole process inside one machine. Removing the side gives some idea of the pressure which is forcing oil from the cake. A worm screw, rather like a domestic mincer, presses the hot meal in a slotted cylinder so that the oil is continuously extracted. The oil cake which remains is taken to another section of the factory for further processing. The nuts have now yielded their oil and it may be taken from the extraction factory in a tanker such as this. But it's still in its crude state and will be refined in other factories where it can be turned to many uses in the household and in industry. Vegetable oils, like mineral oils, can be used as lubricants. They are also a very important source of the raw materials for soap, but perhaps mainly in the manufacture of such things as cooking fats and margarine. 